Hi, this is Dave of JavaCodeJunkie.com and welcome back to another tutorial on JavaFX. In this video, you will learn how to create and use the Tile Pane Layout Manager. I'm going to cover the following topics. Creating a new tile pane, adding child nodes to the tile pane, setting the orientation of the tile pane, setting the horizontal and vertical gap of the tiles in the tile pane, setting the preferred number of columns and rows of the tile pane, setting the default alignment of child nodes in the tile pane, and setting the alignment of individual nodes in the child pane. So let's get started. Step number one is to create a new tile pane object. Now the tile pane class itself has eight different constructors with varying combinations of parameters. What I'm going to do is create a new tile pane object using the default no argument constructor, and then we're going to set the individual parameters separately in other steps. Tile pane equals new tile pane. And that creates a new tile pane with default values. On to step two, where we'll add some nodes to the tile pane. I'm going to add 50 buttons to the tile pane. I'll do that in a for loop. We'll create a new button. And on the button, we will put the textual representation of a number. We'll set the preferred width and height of the button to 50 pixels. And then we'll add the button to the tile pane. Let's run that and see how it looks. So we have a new tile pane with 50 buttons and since the default orientation is horizontal and the default number of columns is five, we'll see that it's divided into five columns of 10 buttons each. And next in step three, we're going to set the orientation for the tile pane. Tile pane dot set orientation. orientation dot horizontal. Now this is the default orientation. So we run the program again. There should be absolutely no difference from the last time we ran. We should see five columns of 10 buttons each. So if we were to set the orientation to vertical, and then run the program, we'll see that it's switched. So now it's five rows of 10 buttons each. And the default number of rows in a tile pane is also five. In step number four, we're going to set the horizontal and vertical gap between tiles. So it's again, tile pane. This one is pretty simple. Set H gap and I'll set five pixels. Quickly run to have a look at that the horizontal gap. Now we see that there is a gap between the tiles horizontally. For the vertical gap, also a five pixels run. Now we also have, in addition to the horizontal gap, we have a vertical gap between components. And there is no padding around the tile pane. So let's quickly set that. Ten pixels all the way around. Run to see the difference, and there's your ten pixel padding around the tile pane. 
In step number five, let's look at setting the preferred number of columns and rows for the tile pane. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the default for both columns and rows is five. So our current orientation is vertical, and you can see here that the default number of rows is five. If we were to increase the size of the screen horizontally, nothing changes. But if we were to increase the vertical size of the screen, then you see that as we get more vertical space, more of the buttons that are in the tiles of the tile pane move down to create an additional row. And if we were to change our default orientation back to horizontal and run it again, we'll see that now we have five columns changing. The vertical space has no effect on the number of tiles or the placement of tiles but changing the horizontal space this time now increases the available space and the tiles that were on subsequent rows now move up to occupy the space that we have created when we resized the pane. Since our current orientation is horizontal, let's change the default number of columns. Tile pane dot set preferred columns. We'll change it from the default of five to 10. Now let's run. Now we have 10 columns instead of the default five. And the same goes for the default number of rows. If our orientation was vertical, the default number of rows is five. And we could set then the default number of rows to something other than the default. Let's go to 10 there as well. The key point to note here is that setting the preferred columns is meant to go with the horizontal orientation and setting the preferred rows is meant to go with the vertical orientation. Before we get to the last two items, the first of which is to set the default alignment for all tiles within the tile pane and the next one, which is to set child node alignment for single nodes within the child pane. What I'd like to do is to assign each of our buttons to an array of buttons so that I can better show you the alignment. And in order to do that, I need access to a handle on each of the buttons. So I've created up here a private instance variable, which is a button array. Down here, I will create the button array. And I'll also assign the button to a place in the array. Since all of the buttons in the tile pane have the same height and width, it's impossible to differentiate uh, the alignment one button from the other because they fill the entire space for each tile. So what I'm going to do is change the size of one of the tiles so that you can better see the tiles that are around it. And what will happen when I change the size of one tile, the tiles for the entire tile pane will change to match the height and width of the biggest button in the tile pane. So let's just pop down here. And I'm going to change the height and width of the 25th button. Set the preferred height. And we'll make this one 75. The others are all 50. And the same for the preferred width. And now if we run, you'll see the 25th is bigger. All of the other tiles in the tile pane have increased so that they are all the size of the largest button, which is 75 by 75 height and width. And you'll see that the default alignment for nodes in the tile pane is center. So you'll see that these on top and below the biggest of the buttons are centered within that button. And the same for those to the left and the right, they are centered. And so let's change the default alignment for all tiles in the tile pane. Tile alignment, pos dot top 
left. And now when we run it, we'll see that all of the tiles in the tile pane now have a default alignment of the top left within their particular tile. And that's easy to see when you look at the largest of the tiles and those around it, top left and top left. So that's how you set the default alignment for all of the tiles in a tile pane. So let's change the alignment for a couple of the tiles to something other than top left. To change the alignment on specific tiles in the tile pane, we use a static method on the class. So tile pane dot set alignment. The child node would be buttons sub one. And the value would be POS dot, let's say bottom right. copy and paste and change that to number 50 and we'll also put 50 at the bottom right. Run the program. The largest tile being number 25 determines the size of the, all of the tiles in the tile pane. The default alignment for the tiles is the top left. All of the tiles in the tile pane except for tile number one and tile number 50 are default alignment of top left. For number one and 50, we've entered a specific alignment of bottom right. And one further point that I'd like to make related to the number of rows and columns, again, depending on the orientation, the number of rows and columns, either the default or a specific number that you would set is only a preferred number of rows or columns. That depends on the amount of space in the pane itself. That number can change depending on whether or not the pane is resized horizontally or vertically. In this video tutorial, we successfully implemented a Java FX tile pane. If you enjoyed this tutorial, click the thumbs up button to like the video. Also, please subscribe to this channel to view more Java FX videos. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and until next time, stay safe and keep on coding.